daughter notices the marks on my arm and asks, Das Bubu? Tracing her fingers over the self-inflicted keloid scars scoring my wrists. For her two-year-old logic, the words, it's an old boo-boo suffice, and she is on to her next discovery or amazement. Her favorite movie is the tale of a young woman working to restore the heart of an earth goddess, a deity who balances nature's rhythms. And when this all-powerful figure comes onto the screen, my daughter exclaims, Mommy! <laughs> she sees me as that immense and divine being capable of shifting mountains and changing the sky. How do I describe to her as she grows that at times now thankfully past, I definitely felt I would not live to see this moment. I could give an entire talk on risk factors and how personal the political really is, how class marginalization, gender discrimination, violence, racism all did affect me growing up. Adolescent panic attacks met with the informal diagnosis of being overly emotional. Hearing public narratives that self-harm simply did not exist in the black community, that any struggle was a sign of shortcoming. I summarize these factors because they are ones that many face every moment of every day in a society where many are being told that they do not belong, do not deserve resources, and that their concerns about human safety are overblown, these concerns are rampant. I once had a friend who told me that my wounds were ugly and I should always keep them covered as I usually did at that point. Later, I had another friend ask where my marks came from, and upon learning of my struggles, said one of the most compassionate and insightful things I've heard to date. They said, I get it. I used to start fights. And this galvanized a couple of notions for me. One, that without a significant amount of planning and evasive effort, I simply would not be able to hide the evidence of my struggles. Another was that I was far from the only one harming themselves but the friends who binge drank or drove recklessly or mimicked dangerous stunts modeled after famous wild boys, they could be the life of the party. And really, when we think about it, the level of self-harm practiced and even celebrated in our society is astonishing. Maybe this concept seems foreign to those of us not in immediate duress, but how often do we wear our tiredness, our overworking nature, our fear of intimacy is as badges of pride, or even wisdom. It's alarming how many of us live on the brink of ourselves, praying that no great force comes to blow us over. The brink, y'all. Like, suicide is the third leading cause of death for youth ages 10 to 24. In Colorado, it is the leading cause of death. Colorado witnessed record-breaking rates of suicide in 2016. Planned cuts in the federal fiscal budget for 2019 are estimated at 21% for the Department of Health and Human Services. This will make professional help harder to find. Our daily culture is in need of desperate shift to supplement the gaps in care. We must continuously discuss wellness and offer healing-centered engagement. And how many of us have practiced our responses for when someone says they are in great pain or do not wish to live any longer, right? Mental health is often treated as the destination-based goal instead of the non-linear journey it really is. We say reach out while knowing a lot of us are not quite equipped to have many of these conversations. Do we truly make ourselves available to those struggling? So I decided I would save the world with poetry. I imagined, who needs a therapist when you've got an open mic? <laughs> the answer to that being still at least one in five people at said open mic, one in five people struggling in our community. I, 
I partnered with nonprofits, and I attended events where artists commiserated about common pains, and I made myself available for outreach and deep service with fellow activists. But our activism and hashtagging was not guaranteed to induce our personal healing. Often the people who could create with me about challenges could not have conversations that advanced our notions to a point of wellness. They didn't have the tools, tools like non-judgmental listening, tools like asking open-ended questions, tools like not using disappointment or guilt, tools like asking how long I'd been feeling this way. I had one friend who did reach out with what I later learned was a very technical approach. They did not chastise. They offered receptivity and true non-judgment. They didn't belittle my agency or intelligence. When my friend asked if I were feeling suicidal, it made me feel offended and defensive and relieved. I started to allow more frank conversations about recovery to enter my creative sphere, kind of breaking through that veneer of strength and capability, resulting in poems like this one. We are ambling awkwardly hopeful, along labyrinths planted deeply in mystifying contemplations, overgrown foliage partially obscuring faces. Sometimes it is hard to recognize self in the overwhelming barrage of piercing assumption when you don't think like them. Lone advocates sing patience an upstream tune, versioning empathetic melodies, palms surrendered to an ever-changing sky, condensation of wandering struggle, a rain of why. Question mark droplets which never slay thirst, weary droves seeking salvation, gingerly traveling down roads of recovery, sometimes silent enough to trick us into aching belief that no one else is here. All others sound merely echo. Rickety red tape bridges always seeming to appear right when our legs have lost their breath. Recovery can feel like ambition swallowing itself, like the weight of impossible, like the sail in each lung deflating, like the first belly flop known to man. And too often, the only beings who offer life raft beliefs are the ones all too familiar with drowning. And oppression always suffocates, even when born the offspring of deep care. Uneducated conclusions only our testimonies can offer compass to. We are the survivors of being lost in plain view offering to each other shelters of understanding. Rest here, call me family. We see each other so clearly, and it has never been easy. But with genuine community pursuing potential, we together recognize this health, this wholeness, this happiness, tiny miracles for each other, for ourselves, we make possible as we heal. There are new procedures to tattoo scars to natural flesh tone. And of course I wonder if it would be easier to erase the evidence, not have to explain. But as my daughter grows, I do wish to offer her a clear view of this survival. It influences my efforts as a mental health first aid provider, a training I believe everyone should take. It informs my approach as executive director of Check Your Head, a creative wellness program. It certainly integrates into my personal relationships, informing my capabilities and supplementing my existing shortcomings. I need her to know that no challenges negate our strength that pain must be tended to, and that there are tangible tools for this, that she will have to be more prepared than many do simply to the body that she inhabits. 
that mommy is fallibly human, but deeply committed to our wellness. And if or when she should ache, that she can be recognized as complete and whole and magic despite any current or old boo-boo she might ever have. <laughs>